We're here. We're live at PRI. Well, we're recording live at PRI. Hey, yeah. everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben. I'm Tim. And we are excited to be answering your questions at the PRI show. You can kind of see our booth, maybe, kind of, sort of. I did mm-hmm. my best, but we are back doing what you love, answering your questions for the people. For the people. But before we begin, Tim, do you have any questions, quibbles, or fashion statement tips before we begin today's episode? Mm, you know, I don't really have anything. Um, you know, we're we're good. We're vibing good. Yep. There's positive vibes around here. I mean, it's yep. been a fantastic show so far. A lot, yep. lot of really cool people we got to talk to yep. and meet. Um, some bigger, way bigger names than normal around yep. here, I'll tell you that. You might have already seen some of those on some videos. PDM's released. PDM is out. PDM is out. Check it out on acezfi.com. It is only a hundred dollars. Hundred dollar bill. Ninety nine, ninety nine. So, super excited. We'll jump right into why you clicked on this video. Ninety nine, nine nine, nine nine, nine nine. German in denial. Nine nine, nine nine. nine. Ant Man. Question one. Is question this a one. tiny ant? A tiny question. Nice. Ant Man nine nine three says, "Could you for the people?" Add a shift light output into an update that we could use one of the extra wires that's in the harness. Neat. A shift light. Yeah, I'll keep right, this in the middle. So that's a, there's, there's a whole thing I want to uh, do in the next year, which is, is my arm in the way? Is yeah, that better? It's okay. Is, is add like internal limiters, you know, mm-hmm. caution lights, shift lights, things like that, For at sure. least to where it can display on the screen like there's an issue, your sensor's out of range, you're... RPMs are hitting your rev limiter, shift mm-hmm. light, etc. What have you? Now, I want to add those in and some stuff to where, like, if you if you have a safety setup to where your oil pressure bottoms out, your thing just turns off, or you know, puts you in some kind of limp mode if you, that's the direction you want to go with it. But yep. yeah, that's that's something I like. It. I, I, I was talking to them about that last year, and uh, no, I think it's a good thing yep. to do. It's just we haven't had the time mm-hmm. to focus on that particular yep. thing, even though it is on the list. It's just not done yeah. yet. That's okay. One of the things that I liked about PRI is that, you know, people are asking those similar types of questions. Yeah, we, we did get asked that a couple of times. Yeah, so. Colin Morgan Colin hyphen Morgan. Uh, Delta 5 India. Mm. It is a LS base 408. Thank you guys. Looking forward to the PDM being released. Already PDM done. PDM is released. Welcome, welcome. Go check it out. Absolutely. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Craft Works. Oh, MC. boy. I believe this is a long one. Is you it? You can, oh my God! Yep. Let's see, Tim. Glad you mentioned EGT sensor info. It was on my brain, but I figured one step at a time. Let's see. Thanks for the tip on the map sensor. Double check my setup. Actually, so on and so forth. Confused about the light system. It said it has second O2 already. So great deal. No worries about the drive-by wire option or trans control. But you guys ever chase an after cruise control? No. Not directly. Uh, Dakota Digital, if you're using Dakota Digital, they do have a cruise module that a uh, few people's using with our stuff. So yep. it looks like it's working pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I gladly buy a new controller harness or whatever I needed to buy. When I finish up my 64 C10 project, as <sighs> LS manual. Hey, it's reading. Big <laughs> fan, so on and so forth. Uh, ready for the PDMs to be out on market. True, we did yep. release that yesterday. Uh, and thanks to you and the other guy, I can't remember his name for all the info and <laughs> great efforts. No, awesome. Um, when it comes to the crew stuff, that's uh, that's that's hairy business because of the fact you got a lot of liability. Yep. So if a company is developing that, you have to have so many safeties built into it just in case you can't turn the crews yep. off. And uh, where that's not really the nature of our direct business, as something we're not doing, there is other companies that's partnered with us on projects that is mm-hmm. doing that. Yep. So you can kind of, kind of look outside the box a little bit. Uh, yep. It's nothing that we're going to really strive to do. Now, yep. if we start doing cruise control, it's because we started also looking into traction control as well. Yeah. And that's probably not for a couple more years. It's honestly. not that it couldn't happen. Yeah. Right. We're not saying it's not going to be a thing. It's just yeah. like we're just not. That's not our big focus right now. We yep. want to continue to be marketable and keep doing the best we can to meet what you guys are asking us to do on average not yep. not the the more interesting custom i need it to do this one thing stuff yep. just, we need to see the volume absolutely uh all right but, i mean it's just 
not a no. It's just not yeah. a. It's a not yet. Yep. Yeah. All right. Danny Richard as our question three. Installing a Deuces Wild Master Kit with a command center surge tank fuel system on my dad's restored 1972 Ford F-250 with a stock 390 and stock manifolds and single exhaust. Was planning on placing the O2 sensor just behind left and right bank Y so that it reads both sides. Do you agree with my placement? This truck has been in the family since new, um, since it's been new, and my dad's daily driver. So I'm sure there will be more questions to come. Great videos, thank you all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say no, right? You don't want to have it in that same spot at the collector flange, correct? Well, you don't want it at the collector. You want to have it as downstream as you can get on a setup like that. Yeah. Uh, any any time there's a merge, mm -hmm. you want to have eight inches. Yeah. If it's coming off the collector, you want to have you know six to eight inches of clearance before you're actually in your pipe yep. and put it in there. If it's coming to a Y off of both banks, yep. um, you want to go a few inches past that because the different pulses from each side of that creates turbulence, which mm. can confuse the O2 sensor. You need it in a nice, smooth, laminar flow situation there. Um, yep. That way, it's just it's not turbulent air. You don't want turbulent air that you're trying to uh, sniff from. You know? Yeah. That's cool. Deuces Wild command center setup. Yeah, I love that. That's it's a good setup. Sweet. Eight and man nine nine three. Will there be an option to customize the handheld screens like change colors, background, and gauge layouts? Yeah, that'll be that'll be a future thing. We got a good layout right now, but we want people to have custom customization to it. So yep. if you want to be blue or green or yellow or pink or what have you not, yep. or just lay them out in a different combination, that's something we are working towards uh, in the next year. So yep. with with newer handhelds and displays coming out, you're going to see a whole lot more ability to customize that yeah. as it goes it's true and we have the pc ability to do such things right that's We've very that true 64 bit architecture coming out at the beginning of the new year so yeah about that so bigger spicier yeah. chip overclocked it a bit a bit more ram a bit more yep. more awesome stuff we can put in there yeah absolutely uh let's see gray line josh we'll wait for josh all right gray line overland does the gauge setup have a fuel gauge in it for us guys that need to know how much fuel we have? Not yet. We're still working on it This t in terminal release. We've been releasing it next month for the last six months. Yeah. But it's uh, it's true. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, but they're working They're working actually on the graphic user interface for the, the actual how the graph looks itself. Yeah. The technology is there. The pin's there. The hardware is there. Yeah. Uh, it's just literally in the, the GUI. It's like we need to have it set up to where you can scale that appropriately and it actually functions. Not just is it in there and works. We don't want it to only work with one parameter. We want it to work with everybody's stuff. Yeah. And that's what the setup time is. Yeah. Josh was talking to me a little bit about it this week, too, about the different types of fuel tanks that you have as well. So it's not like a one-size-fits-all. Yeah, that's why we have to have it customizable. The T, Sunrise. I misspoke on my previous comment. I meant to say... A, I would put a noise filter, or a noise filter would be helpful on the main 12 volt feeding the equipment from the battery. Sorry for the mix up. So, helpful on the main 12 volt feeding the equipment from the battery. Not really needed one there. Yeah. Now, if the guy was going to use the V main for that sound system as well, V main doesn't go to the battery. Yeah, I, I would not. Um, I would, yeah, sticking to what you said last time, triggering a relay to power that. I would not connect any of those loose wires to the battery. I don't know if that's exactly what he's saying here, but putting, keeping that 12 volt at all, running it to power something or to be hooked up to a noise filter, to be hooked up to something that will then go and power something, probably not recommended. That. Yeah, the battery battery has its own capacity, so it's its own noise filter. Yeah. Um, yeah, feel free to elaborate on that. Yeah, um, yeah. I I would steer clear of hooking anything up directly to those, um, even with any kind of filter, or anything like that, to those uh, loose wiring harness um, ends. Yep. You know, so there are things you can do with them, but I would really steer clear of, of hooking up anything that is not like, for example, fan one and fan two, the wires that say fan yeah. one and fan two, AC, those things. So um, I know we've said in the past that the V-Main is a 12-volt output wire. Yeah, very low current. So It's really just meant to either power up a 
Hall Effect Distributor or Trigger Relay. Yeah. Top one here from Stay Gold. 1017X. Is there a way to find or search for suggested or authorized tuners for the ACES systems? It's been a while since we've talked about that. Yeah. It's on the website. Yep. Under uh, authorized tuners, just go there. There's a little mini map tells you where they're located at and what their information is. Yep. Um, I don't think it has any other prices or anything. That's more of a them thing that's yep. their business, but uh, well, yeah. On the website is where you yeah. go to find that. If you're wanting to become an authorized tuner, oh yeah. That was a drill. Just for the record, for anybody who wants to know, that's a drill. They're putting in rivnuts nuts next yeah. door. Um, for anyone that wants to become an authorized tuner, if you do it for fun, if you have a shop, if you actually have a dyno, all those things, what do they do, Tim? Well, you get on acesefi.com and fill out the, the actual application. The process goes through. It gets reviewed. We do a whole lot of Internet stalking on you. Yep. and make sure we can verify who you are, your shop, and all that other information. Then we start a communication, which turns into a little bit of a kind of an interview to make yeah. sure it's like, you know, we're just training you on how to adapt to your, uh, to your tuning style on our system. We're not teaching you how to tune. Yeah. Uh, that's for people that already does tuning, has experience with multiple different systems, and want to adapt to the ACES uh, strategy on that. Yeah. Uh, then, then you can be authorized. Yep. Don, daughter. Let's see. What brand of headers are you you recommend for a 625 horsepower small block and a 69 Camaro street car? Ah, uh, well, headers are all kind of going away in the past. Um, there's a lot of custom headers. Obviously, Headman's a good one. Um, I honestly, I've been using a lot of eBay headers, uh, modifying them accordingly. None of them fit. So. <laughs> That's, that's just the nature of them. You'll, yeah. you'll buy them, and you'll have an old 69 car, and let's just factory spec. The, the body's stretched a little bit. It's tweaked a little bit. The engine's in a slightly different location over time. So the headers always hit things. You have to customize them up or dent them in. Uh, a lot of the ones we've been doing recently just just been going straight eBay headers. I mean, there's no particular brand I like anymore. Um, you know, you can spend a whole lot of money on headers or spend a whole lot of not money on headers and kind of come up with the same outcome, yep. unfortunately. It's just headers have just gotten really weird lately. Unless somebody's making some custom ones with the particular material you like, it's going to be hard. You'll be hard-pressed to get the ones that actually fit really well. Sure. Cool. I like those kinds of questions revolving around builds, too, just because. Yeah, it's it's just more super to hard to get. Than just EFI. Yeah, and it's like headers. A lot of people think you just buy headers and they go right on and they fit perfect and there's no nothing you need to do. If you're buying headers, most likely you're going to need to know some things about headers, unfortunately. And even, yeah. are you getting the right ones for your build? Next question is from SHPBR. Talking about the O2 sensor, because this is from the O2 sensor video on the LS Guide. What about the catalytic converter right after the header as far as that two plays? Yeah, so if you check in there, you notice that that one muffler was real close to the uh, collector flange. Um, a cat's going to be the same kind of thing, but the issue with running O2 sensors in a catalytic converter is it's going to read incorrect. Uh, a lot of times people have to get rid of the cats or extend them further down the exhaust system to get the, uh, to get the O2 sensor to read correctly. Because if it's just collector and then there's a cat right there, you're actually going to have to move that cat somewhere most likely to get it to function correctly. I hate that too because it's that's what we ran into on that uh, Challenger when we was doing it. We ended up gutting the cats on it, and it had the chamber alone was like confusing my O2 sensor so yeah. bad that I had to do some really extreme stuff to get it to just read correctly. It's nothing to do with our sensors. It's just that you know the dynamics of how that exhaust flows around in there mm. really uh, ruin your afternoon when you're trying to tune something. <laughs> Here's one I like this one a lot, mm -hmm. Jose. Ramirez, Ramirez, something, something, 33, uh, 30, 33, so, 30, 33, yeah. Yes. Can you make a good video of the Royal Flesh EFI kit, how to install the distributor too? There is a few videos I've done out there previously, but um, whenever I'm doing the kill shot uh, system video here next, it'll be the same function as doing the Royal Flesh, so yep. you would refer to that, and I may actually... Just keep that video segment slightly separate and tie it to everything related to a magnetic distributor because we're going to film the best we can 
and yeah. talk about locking it out, talk about throwing a thing in there, how you need to line it up, how you need to time it. So that would yeah. be a video in itself, but we are going to add it in with our product videos as yeah. well. That way if somebody says, because, you know, I made that, that one video about locking it out and then another video about actually installing it in an engine as well, we're just going to do the same thing but for Aces this yeah. time instead of, you know, my own channel. Yep. My thing is we could call it TBI, but we have jackpot TBI, which is not the same as far as overall install. Yeah, but jackpot TBI would be LS. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you want, we could just call it TBI because it, it would, for the most part, cover Royal Flush, Deuces Wild, Kill Shot, mm -hmm. Kill Shot Pro. Call it Shot most Classic. most TBI. Yeah, most TBI. Uh, most TBI. Most TBI, TBI installation processes and guide. Tag George, I would like to use my factory speedometer. Can the VSS be split? Or does the controller have a speed out wire? Which uh, system? Um, I believe the, it doesn't say specific system. The the quick draw is going to have a speedo out. We just yeah, we yeah, just yeah. updated the thing, and they did some internal testing. It's looking pretty good there. I believe we're going to be adding one into the jackpot as well for a. It's going to be a 12 volt yeah. square wave. Yeah. So it should have a speedo out. Okay. So if it's not the jackpot itself, because this is coming from the jackpot video, so I'd imagine mm -hmm. it's circling around the jackpot. Um, if you're using the quick draw standalone system, it will be in there for sure. Um, but you said in the future. The yeah, we're, I'm working on that right now of, you know, where that wire is going to be, how's it going to look, what it's going to do. Cool. Uh, that way we can have that speedo out. Um, some people can use a signal conditioner that picks up and splits the, the thing as long as it's not tied back in there making a whole bunch of noise because it will read crazy values. Yeah. If you actually just slice it in half and tie it into something else, it's nightmare territory right there. Adam, Adam Hurst hyphen Echo 2 Charlie. I'm very interested in seeing your next video on trans tuning mainly to 4L80 on the TCC lockup speed versus RPM. Yes, because we're doing that on the black Aces truck. It has a 4L80 in there. I want to do one on adjusting a 4L60. It's a little bit different, but the same in a way. And I want to do one solely on the 4L80. Yeah. It's the same kind of business. It's a little bit different. They are just a little different, but it's fine. Yeah. So we're going to go through all those parameters, kind of a pointing at the screen and talking a whole bunch about what that means and what it does. And then we're going to... Uh, try to actually show when I make a change how does it affect things yeah. Thing, things that are applicable across the board we're going to place those videos in multiple areas yeah. it'll be the same video but it'll yeah. be you know like hey it's a kill shot or a TBI unit or a jackpot and it's going to be here's a video about doing fans yeah. because they don't even the parameters in the handheld look extremely similar where they're at so you can watch that video and be dialed in a lot of people if we make a make a a video installing a kill shot but we don't do one on a royal flush for instance yep. they they don't look at the name they just think it's a completely different system where it's just got a cdi box in it yep. you know it's yeah it's so similar it's kind of hard to make the same video twice because you'll be doing the exact same video twice yeah i hope it, if you had the chance to come to uh pri i hope you had the chance to come by our booth talk to this guy see our products a lot of those things that we released or announced at sema oh absolutely here. yeah so, um, like 64-bit, EGT, Lambda, Can.io, all those things mm -hmm. are here to, to play with, mess with, look at. So, But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Tech Tuesday. If you liked it, please feel free to leave a like down below. If you have questions about EFI or ACES EFI, please feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll be happy to get to it in the next Tech Tuesday video. Or if just you know other people that are looking to do EFI, send them our way as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And as always, we will see you all in the next episode. Right. Bye for now. Bye now.